1989 was an awesome time to be alive. The girls were all wearing Electric Youth perfume. I was eating Batman cereal. We were still watching Saturday morning cartoons like Rude Dog and the Dweebs. Get rude. And later in the year of 1989, that's when the Sega Genesis was released. Now, I didn't have one yet, but my friend did. And I remember when it came out, I felt I was such a Nintendo fanboy. I almost felt like I was betraying Nintendo by wanting to get a Sega Genesis. But of course, later on, you realize, well, yeah, you can, you can have both. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. However, I don't think any other game system in history has had such a great lineup of launch titles as the Sega Genesis did for its time. So looking at a few of those and some of the other games that would come out later in the year, here are the games you were playing if you purchased a Sega Genesis back in 1989. Before Sonic the Hedgehog, we had Altered Beast as the packing game. Rise from your grave. And, I mean, why not? It utilizes all three buttons with a jump, a punch, and a kick. Two players simultaneous on this one, taking advantage of both controllers. Super fun game in the arcade, so now you have that arcade experience right at home with your Sega Genesis. Kind of an interesting title on this one too. When you pick up the orbs, you get stronger and stronger. Then after three orbs per level, you turn into a monster, a beast, an altered beast, if you will. And once you're the beast, then you can start, you know, defeating the bosses and all that. That's how you're gonna win. There's a different beast on most stages. And if you don't get all your power-ups by the time you hit the boss, uh, the boss just turns around and walks away. Doesn't even wanna deal with you. You have, to, you have to go go back through and collect more orbs so you can get through and uh, and then fight the uh, bosses on this one. A classic for sure, super nostalgic for Altered Beast. A little frustrating at times, but still pretty fun. Golden Axe came out a couple of months after the Sega Genesis was released. This one, to me, should have been the pack-in. However, it came out later on, so you're getting your money out of it anyway. Golden Axe, one of my favorite arcade games for the time, for sure. Three characters you can choose from. They're all, yeah, kind of play about the same anyway. Now, yeah, with their own strengths and weaknesses all the same. The game loves to troll you. If you have two characters on screen, they will find a way to get on both sides of you, which is almost why you need to play this game as a two-player game. It is two-player simultaneous, and gotta love that. I love the fact that it also features magic that you can use. You can actually, like, launch magic, and however much magic you collect, that's how powerful your magic is going to be. It also features little animals you can ride, too. I mean, there's dragons later on as well, but it's, it's kind of a fun idea that you can, you know, pick these guys up and use them to your advantage. I still love playing Golden Axe today. Love this game so much. And definitely, hey, you know what? It came out in 1989 for the Sega Genesis. It's a must-have for sure. Keeping up with the great arcade games now at home, you have Super Hang On. And although you don't have the bike that you can actually sit down on as a controller, you have to play with the uh, Genesis pad, well, it, it still plays okay. Now they could have, like many other, made a great car racing game, but they decided to say, you know what? Let's do a motorcycle game. Yeah, why not? It worked out pretty well for them. Of course, it worked out even better in the arcade because you have to actually sit down on an actual, you know, motorcycle type device and lean into your corners left and right and all that. That was super fun. It's your typical racing driving style game, just you happen to be on a motorcycle. It's called Super Hang On. Yeah, sure. Super Thunder Blade as well. Now, maybe a little bit more difficult since you don't have an arcade stick, you just have the D-pad, but still plays okay. Now, this was years before Star Fox came out. So this is the kind of game, like, when Star Fox came out, everyone was gushing over it. I was like, yeah, I played it before. It's called a Super Thunder Blade. <laughs> I, know it's, I know it's not exactly the same, but still. I loved the 3D-ness of this game, especially when it first came out. And I'm not very good at it, as you can clearly see, but it's, it's still fun to play around with. I mean, it's just it's a behind the back, uh, you know, you have helicopter game, you know, sure, why not? You have Super Hang On, which is your motorcycle game. There's Outrun in the arcade, which is your car game, your driving game. And you kind of uh, flying a helicopter game, but you're also shooting down stuff, which is kind of cool. If you had a Sega Genesis back in 1989, chances are you probably played this game. You also probably played Space Harrier 2. Now, Space Harrier in the arcade, absolutely love it. In Space Harrier 2, uh, I mean, the frame rate is a little off for me on this one, but I still find this game a lot of fun. I mean, to me, the first Space Harrier, man, you can't top that. It's just, it is what it is, and I hate to say that phrase, but it really is, that's the game, that's Space Harrier. Space Harrier 2, well, looks cool. The music's a little different, still plays the same. Again, I wish you could overclock it or something with the frame rates to make it a little bit more smooth, but I still had a ton of fun playing Space Harrier 2 on my Sega Genesis. We've made it this far without even talking about Alex Kidd and the Enchanted Castle. Now, Alex Kidd was kind of the unappointed mascot character for Sega. Uh, we've seen the Master System, the so many Master System games, and now uh, one of the launch titles as well. 
for your Sega Genesis. Now, if you're gonna launch a video game system, especially a console that we would consider retro now, you gotta have a Mario type game. You gotta have that cartoon looking platformer that's just fun for all ages. And this one is a little frustrating for all ages. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't jump the way you want to jump sometimes. Uh, sometimes you end up just dying for because you didn't see the thing. And so much of these games, I don't know why, but it relies on that junk and pawn system. It relies on the paper, rock, scissors idea to defeat enemies, which is like a luck of the chance of the draw. It's It shouldn't be the case. You can get items that will make it so you can see what they're predicting, and then you can choose the item, or you know, choose the ability that would, you know, defeat them. But it was just interesting enough, just different enough, that this was the game that you had to have for the Sega Genesis in 1989. It took me a long time to beat this game, too. I didn't actually beat it until literally about eight years ago. And I've tried, but it, it took getting one of those Genesis collections to finally go through this game. All right, probably the coolest opening cinematic ever. Oh my god, Revenge of Shinobi. I loved Shinobi in the arcade. And Revenge of Shinobi, oh man, way even better. Way even better on this one. I like the fact that you have your throwing stars, but if you get close enough, you can kick them or use your sword, but yeah, you can you know, ration your throwing stars if needed. But you pick up a ton of them along the way, so you don't need to really ration them. I mean, you have plenty, and you'll always pick up more. Just like Shinobi in the arcade, you also have your special like magic ability. There's a few of them you can choose from on this game, but fun to have. And with Revenge of Shinobi, you can't go wrong. This is a must-have for sure for anyone with a Sega Genesis. And the fact that this game came out during that first year, it's not even the full year. I mean, it came out later. It came out in the autumn of 1989. And the fact that it lasted this long and is still as great as it is today, that's, that tells you something. A game, admittedly, I don't see a whole lot of people talk about. Rambo 3 was, a, uh, was one of the first year games for the Sega Genesis. And it's pretty decent, it's pretty fun. It's that top-down overview, shooting the enemies. You have your couple of little upgrades too. You have a knife if you wanna use that to get close enough. But you also have your exploding bow and arrows. You even have bombs you can use. I do like how sometimes it goes like this behind the back view where you're like defeating like this helicopter, for instance. Um, and that's, you know, it just gives you a little bit of a, a variety of gameplay. And a little variety too, like sometimes it's not just get to the end of the level, sometimes you're in this area and you have to find, like in this for instance, you have to find the secret agent. And if it's not the secret agent, they'll let you know. But you're looking for the secret agent, that's how you can get past this level. Rambo 3 is pretty awesome and I'm glad it came out when it did. Oh, man, year one, can you believe that? 1989. Well, it makes sense to grab something like Rambo 3 because it was based on a movie for the time. Then you have games like Mystic Defender for the Sega Genesis, 1989. It's not based on a license. It's not based on an arcade game that I know of. So here in America, you're just like, well, it looks pretty cool. And when you pick it up, you'll learn quickly that yes, it's actually very cool. I mean, they could have reduced everything down and maybe put it on a Tengen cart for the NES, but it still wouldn't feel the same as Mystic Defender does for the Sega Genesis. Just this, everything about this. And you can also get your weapon upgrades too to you know get better type of weapons and stuff like that. I mean, sure, it's basically just a you know, beat the horde. Just, you know, there's so many enemies coming at you, you gotta defeat them before they defeat you. Got some pretty creative bosses in this game too. It scrolls left and right and up and down. It has that weird kind of spooky, ghostly element to it. I mean, some of these enemies remind me of like the parade scene from Paprika. If you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's always fun to see what kind of enemies are going to pop up next in this game. That's super fun. I love this one. Hey, what about Thunder Force 2? This was a pretty cool one. Well, I thought it was pretty cool because you can go anywhere on the map. You're overworld. So, I mean, it's not just, you know, side-scrolling up and down, left and right. You're just going all over trying to get to where you need to go and a couple of varieties of guns you can use too. Whether you want to shoot forward and behind you, whether you want to shoot just a bunch of bullets all at once in front of you, hey, whatever works best for you. It's one of those games I'll probably die more by crashing into a wall than by the enemies. But I still had a lot of fun with this one and happy to see it. If you are looking for that vertical shooter, look no further than Truxton. This is a fun one. I remember renting this one. I never owned it. However, uh, I mean, just a classic, fun, arcade-style vertical scrolling shooter and you can get some awesome weapons uh, and upgrades uh, as you play through these rounds, play through these missions, play through these levels. Fun enemies, big enemies. It's a classic, a lot of people look out for this one. Harder to find if you're looking for a legit cart. Fortunately, our friends at Retrobit did make a re-release of this cart, so it might be a little bit easier for you to find out if you're looking for a physical way to play this game. Uh, Retrobit may be the way to go, but if you can find one out of the yard sale or pawn shop or something like that, man, definitely pick it up. 
I remember a time when some people were kind of clowning on Genesis for not having enough Capcom support. And Capcom made several games. I think they were more bugging about the fact that they didn't have a Mega Man or Street Fighter 2 yet, which did, which did come out later. But Capcom had a ton of games for the Sega Genesis, including Ghouls and Ghosts. Now me, for me, as far as I'm concerned, Ghouls and Ghosts is superior to Ghosts and Goblins in literally every way. I know a lot of people love the original. A lot of people just like, that's, you know, like that's the first, but it's like, no, no, no. Ghouls and Ghosts, that's the one to get. I liked Ghouls and Ghosts because it featured not only the wizard that would like transform you depending on which level you were, if you had like, you know, if you're armored or armorless or having your gold armor, but also it has the gold armor, which gives you whatever weapon you have. It gives it like a special magical ability when you charge it up. And so hard to keep it because still with this game, like with Super Mario Brothers, when you get hit and you go all the way back down to Small Mario, this game, you can have the gold armor, you get hit and you lose everything. You gotta find your regular armor and then find the gold armor again. Um, it's just, it's hard to, hard to keep up sometimes. So you just have to know the patterns and know when enemies are gonna come out so you can defeat them before they get you. As always with Ghosts and Goblins or Ghouls and Ghosts or any of these games, the bosses are always kind of fun. They're always kind of a little spooky, always a little creative. I, li I like the fact they have big creative bosses. That's, that's Capcom for you. I first played this in the arcade and then when I played it on the Sega Genesis, I was like, oh, it's basically the same. Basically the same, and I'm okay with that. The arcade version of Ghosts and Goblins and the NES version of Ghosts and Goblins, eh, not, not, not so similar. <laughs> this one's pretty close. Another arcade game come home is Forgotten Worlds. Great shooter on this one. It's a horizontal shooter, and don't get it twisted beyond that. It's definitely a horizontal shooter. However, you have your satellite around you, and your the unfortunate thing for the Sega Genesis is at the arcade, I think it used a pivot controller, like a spin dial, to choose your direction that you're shooting. And on this one, since you don't have that on the Sega Genesis, uh, your A button and C button will rotate you left, uh, you know, counterclockwise or clockwise to shoot in that direction, your B button being the firing button. It is doable. It's accessible, it's okay, but still fun to see for the Sega Genesis, and it's still a lot of fun, and you can still play this game today. You don't have to rotate. You don't have to spin around. You can just shoot forward the entire time, and you probably get pretty far, maybe even beat the game that way. I have to challenge myself with that. Forgotten Worlds is definitely worth checking out. Good old Capcom on the Sega Genesis. Subscribe if you haven't. I have more of these videos coming out soon.